हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डू चैप्टर फोर्टीन ऑफ मैनी वर्ल्ड ऑफ लिटरेचर एंड द टाइटल ऑफ द चैप्टर इज बिटवीन द मॉस्क एंड द टेम्पल रिटन बाय बोमन देसाई सो दिस राइटर इज अ पारसी एंड ही नरेट्स अ माइनर इंसिडेंट विच कुड हैव फ्लेम्ड अप इन टू अ मेजर कन्फ्रेंटेशन द इम्पॉर्टेंस अटैच टू रिलीजियस प्लेसिस and the intolerance which stems from this attitude can lead to riots the whole question is about a garbage bin or we can call it as a dust bin which everyone wants to get rid of and finally the chairman of the sanitation committee who happens to be a woman and also a parsi decides to handle the problem she dresses up specially for the occasion and measuring the distance between the mosque and the temple she places the dustbin midpoint and gets both parties to accept the situation she is able to do so because she is neutral and impartial the name of that parsi lady is banu and as it is her habit she gets up early in the morning by the crowing of the cock and she prays for some time after coming out of the bed then she has got a helping hand and this helper or her maid named femi she is more than a maid she has become a companion of banu and banu starts her day with morning prayers and the birds like quail sparrows bulbuls they announce their presence early in the morning one morning as she had an extra prayer because she was anxious about the outcome of the day as chairman of sanitation committee banu had to settle a dispute between the hindus and the muslims about the placement of a dustbin the hindus said it was too close to the temple and wanted to move it further away but the muslims said it was already very near to their mosque and wanted to move it nearer to the temple so the collector who was responsible for collecting revenues he had warned that a blood bath might ensue if she was not careful it was not safe for a man leave alone a woman and banu said she was the chairman and set a day to examine the site so after saying an extra prayer she put on a plain cotton sari with the blouse and a plain border and plain black walking shoes to look more business like she never wore bangles and rings and tiaras sure she did not even have to think about that she took her breakfast which consisted of one egg one slice of bread and a cup of tea which she drank from the saucer because it was too hot and while listening to the news on her murphy radio the collector sent a car to pick her up but she sent it back she had chosen to walk because it was not far from her place and secondly she wanted to show the people that she was just like them she was glad the two committee members who had come with the car had stayed with her and they would have been little help in a riot but she was glad for their moral support the day became hotter as she set out and she held up the sash of her sari to cover her eyes from the sun along the way a group of students recognized her and said साहेब जी बानू बाय ते केम छो हाउ आर यू टूडे बानू स्टॉप्ड एंड देन शी सेट 
she was well but she has got some important work to do and cannot wait for chit chat where are you going when the students inquired she just smiled and there were hindus and muslims among the students and an idea struck her she remembered gandhi ji's salt march during which hindus and muslims of both genders and all castes and ages had united in a show of solidarity against the english come come see for yourself we are not going far everybody come so the students followed her and as they walked more people joined them there were women with baskets of vegetables on their heads then there were men carrying a carrot of tiffins on their head there were college chanawalas business who did and other hawkers begging children street animals and come come the students said as if they were on a picnic and a large number of people accompanied them to see what was going to happen so soon the collector's car also approached them again and the collector himself got out asking her why didn't she use the car it would have been better banu called him with her hand come with us see for yourself the collector understood and the retinue banu was building for herself was more impressive than a rolls royce the populist was always more effective than the aristocratic approach and he took his place beside her banu led the parade the men mostly in white and the women they wore gaily dresses the dolls goats chickens along the dusty wadis the dirty paths the cobbled streets past the tiny huddled shops of the cobblers tailors potters and other artisans around the cows swishing tails at flies and pyramids of dry dung amid a constant ringing of bicycle bells and the honking the horns of the scooters when a white cow stood in the path banu and others just escaped from her and she enjoyed herself when they got to the rubbish bin the dust bin the hindu and the muslim spokesmen and their followers stared with their mouths open not just as the crowd but that the chairman was a woman they were surprised the hindu a fat man with a red handkerchief knotted at its four corners on his head he was wearing a kurta dhoti and chappal said my ji my ji you are the chairman means they were surprised to find a woman as their chairman nothing nothing but you are the chairman this was their response the muslim who was much darker wearing a red jacket with a black tassel and brown tailored pants which revealed red socks which were quite worn and dusty brown shoes he said nothing but his brow was wrinkled in puzzlement he was also surprised to find a woman as their chairman banu got straight to the point the solution is simple she said but we have all got to be reasonable we have got to find the place exactly between the mosque and the temple so she had an idea and she walked from the mosque to the temple and told them to count her footsteps banu spoke with such assurance that a passer by might have thought she had rehearsed the event the musliman walked grudgingly stiffly a little to the side as if he were not with them his brow still wrinkled as if he were thinking important thoughts counting in his mind the hindu walked with banu 
counting loudly in a sing song voice as if he were learning the numbers in school the crowd counted along and they counted exactly 232 steps to the temple so the distance from the mosque to the temple which banu covered was of 232 steps and she now asked the enthusiastic crowd as to what would be the half number and they shouted 116 she asked them to count with her again as she walked back to the mosque and stopped at 116 this is the middle point and she said it is the place where the dustbin must be put it meant moving the bin closer to the temple and farther from the mosque banu was relieved because she felt the hindu would give in more easily than the muslim this is the best place she said and this is the fair place what do you think she asked at looking at the hindu the hindu looked at his followers who nodded he beamed it is fair ma ji it is fair the muslim did not smile said nothing but nodded his approval without even looking at his faction both thanked her said it was a wise decision they were indebted to her if she needed them for anything they would definitely come so anyone could have provided the solution banu said later but it helped that so many came with her so and also that she was a parsi not a hindu or a muslim and it helped even more that she was a woman that just surprised them too much to argue